Alright, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Siege of Apollon. Here on my channel, Idle Wisdom. We're here again in the Inner Keep. If you recall last episode, last couple episodes, they were really just one recording session that went on a little bit, little bit longer than perhaps was optimal, but I was trying to get that kind of the last stuff done before we head on to the to getting stuff in action again. Things in motion. If you recall, let's see. We'll traverse the out inner bailey so I can speak for a bit. If you recall, last episode we continued to talk to the knights and the ladies and maids of, and heard more about the, the the order of holy knights that used to protect the city that was once here in this location. And if we were a knight, if we were doing the knight build playthrough, that of course would have been important for us getting our training in this chapter. As it is, we're not a knight. And we also talked with Anthemus Sh Shadamar, the, the mage from Fornax, and he, how would I say, uh, was very uncooperative and Talon here was a bit of a dum dumb. But if we had been a mage instead of a scout, it would have been where we got more training as well. But we are a scout, and so we did not. But we got some more flavor and background. We also went and talked to some of the other residents of the Inner Keep. It was interesting, some of them. Like the thing about golems. Golems in the privy. Kind of funny. <laughs> kind of nasty. But, you know, whatever. And then we also delivered the oils to Anthemus. Not Anthemus. To, from Fester the Alchemist to... What's his face? Um... Tempest, the blacksmith, the, the, the swordsmith, who's making a sword for Seroth. But now we need to actually get back to it and talk to the the, the friars, the brothers. Good day, Kellen. I'm glad to see that you are doing well. Thank you, friar. Please pardon me. I must be on my way. Okay, no, we have to talk to Brother Crosby. That's what it is. Are you Brother Crosby? I, no, you're not. You're Brother K, right? Oh, hello, Kellen. I'm sorry I can't speak with you now. I have business to attend to. Understood. Farewell, good monk. Right. Oh, that's right. He's right here with Belinda. Alrighty. So, if you recall, a couple episodes ago, a few episodes ago, uh, we obtained the ingredients and the and the the chant needed to cure Elazar's malaise. He seems to be having increased problems, and in his his disorder seems to be magical in nature. We went and talked to. Elrath, and he gave us a a dispelling type dealy. It's right here. The potion to heal Elazar, and we have the Grimstone root and Swamp Fire flower. So let's actually um, save right quick and talk to Brother Crosby. He's like. Have you found the necessary incantation and ingredients? You seem to have taken quite a bit of time for some reason. Oh, yeah, n um, never mind that. You seem to be a lot more better trained and shadowy. Oh, you noticed that, huh? Well, let's get going. Excellent. He accepts the items and mixes them in a crucible. We can now perform the incantation. All right, is everything prepared? And he gives Elazar the tonic. Glop, 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 glop. And remember, Elazar is kind of comatose still. Elazar has ingested the ingredients. You may begin whenever you are ready. And so our pal Callant has to summon of sufficient probity and purity and strength has to say it. So Eso Garana Nessa Maka Aresh Vedad Bus You must see through the pain and complete the incantation, or else Elazar will surely perish. Grimacing Wakasa Mesta Eleoteris, Zamas Edis Sipu, as waves of agony wash over you, you find yourself rendered as immobile as a statue. Kellen, are you alright? You try to speak, but are frozen in place. Some weird stuff's about to happen, and I'm not entirely sure what's about to happen. Journals. Okay, so, see, it's like, okay, so, gar we're frozen in place. And then guards came and took us. Queen Nanessi, regarding you severely. I hereby accuse you, your brother Lieutenant Corvus, and the mage Elrath of treason against Avalon, and thus against 
all the Seven Kingdoms. Do you wish to enter a plea of guilty at this time? <laughs> so apparently, yeah, she is not. You can't be serious! Oh, I think she's serious, pal. Well, apparently the shot I will have done quite a bit of meddling with your mind, your highness. I shall interpret that as a plea of not guilty. Have you anything else to say for yourself? Let's see, okay, this this court is a fraud, and at no time did I violate your territorial airspace. This court is a violation of international law. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, what was that? Iron Eagle. <laughs> what a funny movie. Anyways, okay, this is a farce. What evidence do you have you that I have betrayed my family's good name, my nation, and all of Israel? Or, you're wasting your time, your highness. This does not make sense. You must acquit. This charge doesn't fit. Or, I was accosted while trying to help Elazar, help rid Elazar of an illness likely caused by foul play. This hardly sounds like the activity of a traitor. Even now, I am worried more about Elazar's health than the outcome of this <laughs> trial. Show some respect for jurisprudence. As to your professed concerns over the well-being of the CR Elazar, he is recovering despite your efforts. <laughs> okay, so despite, I was working with the monks to save him, or might I remind you, your highness, that I was not in Southgate when Elazar took ill? Hmm. We, we which should we say? despite? We'll see. Might I remind you, your highness, I was not there. Silence! Now your judge and jury shall be the lady and gentleman behind me. Who, since we do not have a proper courtroom, are standing before the ceremonial seats of their homelands. As the highest ranking member of this jury, King Rance will be the only one seated. <laughs> so we have a lack of a proper courtroom or proper evidence of that I'm sure may I request that we begin the proceedings immediately or I know of the ways of justice I will be found not guilty and this will have been a waste of time please let us dispense with the formalities there is no reason to dawdle hmm well, we'll, we'll, we'll say yeah I don't think you have proper evidence either ignoring you representing the kingdom of Cathaya is Lady Chadwick betrothed the king Isternis Hmm. Is he the one that we helped? Yeah, he's the one that we helped. Next to Kale. Next is Kale of the Kingdom of Fornax, and magistrate of their council. Captain Nikophris is serving as the agent for Nysos, as that nation's ranking member in Avalon. The representatives of Elithria and Eratoi shall be appointed shall be their appointed ambassadors. Lucius, who never was very friendly to us, and Joffrey, Ambassador Joffrey, and she coughs, pausing. King Ranch shall stand in Oriam's place, and finally, Lord Harold is acting as a delegate for Taborland. Would you like to choose someone in the jury to bear character witness for you? Okay, so we can say, not at this time, it may aid me to wait to do that until later, or we could say, I select Captain Nicophorus, we are well acquainted, and arrived in Avalon at the same time. Or we can say, I select Ambassador Joffrey. I recently rescued his son, his nephew, from the clutches of the Shah. Ah, um, let's t I, Captain Nikofris knows us well enough, but we haven't had too many dealings with him since coming here. But Ambassador Joffrey, we have. So let's um, say that. Ambassador Joffrey, facing you. Yes, yes. It is good to see you again, Callan, though not under these distasteful circumstances. Yes, certainly not. He clears his throat and faces Nanessi. <coughs> Nanessi. Recently, I was distraught over the disappearance and feared capture of my nephew, Edgar, who is very dear to me. It was clear to Entrow, Sir Roth's personal page, that I was distraught, and when Callan was informed by Entrow of my condition, he sought me out to assist me. Although I felt that asking him to go out of his way while walking among the enemy, no less, would be too much of a risk, he assur assured me that he would do his best. Yes. He best ca his best culminated in the safe return of my nephew from imprisonment deep within Shatul camp. I do not believe a traitor would do such. Indeed, be allowed freedom to do such. In, in addition, my nephew has tendered an account that precisely matches Callan's. I am finished with my statement. Well, thank you, Ambassador Joffrey. You may continue now, Your Highness. Blinking distractedly, uh, uh, comport yourself, Callan. Now, the first 
we shall come to is the issue of some items that have gone missing from several areas in the keep. So, you are accusing me of thievery? I thought the charge was treason. You've had your chance to set up a, a background for others to view yourself against it. Now, it's my turn. And while I can see how the, the odd scrap of armor, weapon, or magical item may aid a soldier, I do not understand how taking a rose could possibly assist you. Do you wish to deny that you have this rose on your person? Or have you an explanation as to why you possess this? <laughs> uh, this rose is an adornment. <laughs> People think of me more think of me more as a gentleman when I'm wearing it. Oh wow. Huh, that's weird. That's from the very beginning. But yeah, you know, we had it with permission from that dude when we got the letter for him at the very first or second episode. A pathetic rejoinder, but as you said, you are not on trial for thievery. Do you wish to consult a member of the jury to tender his or her opinion of your explanation? So we could ask, um, say no, I do not, or Lady Chadwick, you are nobly born and have no reason to steal. Would you care to hazard a guess as to how many gold crowns are, are there are in my purse? Think you I would have need to steal any money? We could ask her that, that might be a good one. I don't know what that would do. Or we could say, to Ambassador Kale, you must be a perceptive man indeed to have reached such a rank, uh, the rank of ambassador in a nation like Fornax. How many pieces of gold do you estimate are in this bulging satchel at my side? Well, uh, huh. What's I, I I don't know which is better. Let's say the one with Ambassador Kale. Well, more than I've earned in my position as magistrate this season for sure. While it may be that you have taken that which does not belong to you, it is true that Avalon forces upon us a unique set of circumstances which, even if they do not exonerate you for thievery, certainly mitigate the severity of the charges to a trifling. Indeed, with as much money as you have accrued through your travels, you could make more than just rep recompense for what you've taken with thrice the currency it would take to purchase the items. In addition, it is true that you would not need to steal anything you did not need. In an insular environment, as provided by a siege, it is the odd bit that makes the difference. Odd bits such as enchanted rings which cannot readily be made, especially considering the shortage of worthy metals I've heard of. And he pauses to clear his throat. Please continue, Magistrate. Turning towards Nanesi, it would behoove one with traitorous intent to avoid men or women of my training, while we cannot precisely read minds. Would that we could, there would be no treachery. It is true that, as a whole, we are very perceptive and can see through all but the most clever artifice. Indeed, no, wait, no, instead of avoiding me, Kellen sought me out and assisted me in delivering a message to one of my fellows, essentially subjecting himself to my scrutiny time and again. This point of alleged thievery is not worth pondering. We have been here for a quarter of an hour, and I have yet to hear any evidence that would implicate Callan in, much less convict Callan of, a treasonous plot. As a matter of fact, I've heard no evidence at all. Of any kind. Well, thank you, Magistrate Kale, Your Highness. Hmm. And she pauses for several seconds. Next, we come to the point of the missing Earthstone. Perhaps you, or one of your cohorts, can explain why an ancient artifact with the potential for destroying Avalon is no longer with us. <laughs> the Earthstone is safe with the Immortal Guardian to whom it originally belonged. She has been reunited with her people, the so-called Lurkers, who inhabit the temple beneath Avalon, who, with her assistance, would ensure that the Earthstone stays where it belongs, in their possession. So you claim that you have taken the Earthstone to another world? How comes it that you are able to travel to other worlds? Indeed, which world is it that you have traveled to? Is this that you've traveled to? Let me get some coffee right quick. A portal unearthed from the ancient temple beneath Avalon was one of the original paths used by the Lurkers' ancient society to travel between this world and their astral plane, which has been explained to be almost like another world. Elrath got the portal to function, his original intent being that it was to be used for the mass exodus of Avalon's inhabitants should the need should the keep ever be overrun. And what were you doing on this astral plane? Oh, this ought to interest you there, your, your Highness. The Sha'ul had occupied the astral plane, which, 
because of its very special properties, allowed them to summon the spirits of the Avalonians there to be meddled with. According to Palandrian, many of our fellows complained of nightmares, which were actually the result of their spirits being meddled with. In fact, your highness, yours was one of the spirits being meddled with. They paid special attention to you, which is likely the reason for this trial. A murmur passes to the assembled jury. Might I remind you, Callan, that I am not the one on trial here? I am aware of that, your highness. In summation, the Earthstone is safe and shall never be a risk to Avalon again. A flimsy explanation, but if it is all you are offering, I will accept it happily. I, I, I don't think she's well. Very well. Please continue. I have heard that you have taken many trips to the Shatul occupied village surrounding Avalon. Was this one you reported to your superiors? No, I reported to my superiors upon returning to Avalon. Mudam was my commanding officer at the time. Everything I did was under his direction and most assuredly did not help the Shatul in the least. Rather, it set them back quite a bit, unlike this trial. Such a simple explanation. How unfortunate for you that there is no one here to back it up. With all due respect, your highness, it does not sound as though you have anyone to support your claims either. Perhaps. Now, Callan, there is an army of skeletons beneath Avalon where you recently traveled, supposedly to, to, to defeat a lich. How would you explain that? That has nothing to do with me. I know nothing of the undead, much less how to create or control them. Or that is the work of Phileas' assistant. Or, we could just say there, I've consulted with Sir Roth, Bossian, Felic, and Friar Mastis on this subject, and the Friar is currently attempting to devise a method of cleansing the area of this evil. Perhaps the Lich left something behind when brave Phileas made the spirits guide him. <laughs> Poor guy. And I defeated it. I am certainly not responsible for it. I have no knowledge of the undead. Queen Nanessi raises her arm dramatically and looks as though she will speak, but is preempted from behind. King Rant says, What is that terrible noise? It sounds like, and he cocks his head to the side, oddly, like a chicken, a chicken being strangled. Or a man yelling hysterically, look, he's exhausted. To arms, Southgate has fallen. All right, Captain Kalvarik. At last, someone who can keep their wits. By all the spirits that were in our darkest hour, the shot I will have penetrated Southgate. And we've just barely managed to hold them back at this barricade. To make matters worse, I worse. I have reports that East Gate and the Peasants Bailey Gatehouse are under serious assault now also. How horrible. Tell me, Captain, how did this happen? Everything happened so quickly, Callan, that it has been difficult to get an accurate account. My attempt to get a situation report from the nearby Peasants Bailey Gatehouse gave me nothing but a, nothing more than a, another casualty in my ranks. Blast those shot of war archers. From what little I've been able to piece together, Southgate's swift fall seems to have been made possible with help from inside Avalon. More traitors! Will we never be free of such scoundrels? We've suffered mightily from them, that's for certain. But at least now they seem to have all shed their false colors. It's too late for the few honest men who remained in Southgate, though. Oh man. Unless we can make sure that the Peasant's, Gale Peasant's Bailey Gatehouse does not fall, none of us will last much longer. Well, how can I best aid our defense, Captain Kelvaric? Perhaps the good fortune that has seen you through so many adventures lately will hold up a bit longer. If you are willing, I urgently need you to know what's happening in the Peasant's Bailey, Peasant's Bailey Gatehouse. Will you volunteer for this mission? Well, certainly. How should I make my way to this gatehouse? Access the catwalk, which leads to the gatehouse. It, it, uh, access to the catwalk, which leads to the gatehouse, is on the third floor of the outer keep. Don't take too long, Callan. For planning some sort of solid strategy out of this mess is difficult enough already. Without the information you will gather, it will nigh be impossible. May the good spirits guide and speed you on your mission. I will make all haste, Captain Kalvar. Alrighty. So, we have to discover the situation in the Peasant's Bailey Gatehouse and then report back to Captain Kalvarik. Alright. Adventure. Incredibly... I have stood trial for treason with Elrath, Elrath and Corvus. The whole fiasco was going well for me, as there was no evidence. But Queen Nanessi, our accuser, insisted on using theatrics and drawing the trial out. However, a panting page interrupted the proceedings, screaming that Southgate had been taken. And the Peasant's Bailey Gatehouse can be reached via a catwalk on the third floor of the Outer Keep. Alright. Journal. Let's go back one. Previous. Okay, 
Nope, no, nope. alright. Now there's, see there's Callan getting led away, and there's Elazar going, Hey, what are you idiots doing? They're like, quiet, old man. <laughs> alright, still dazed and somewhat confused from my efforts to heal Elazar, I find myself in a holding cell beneath Avalon. I can remember but bits and pieces of the events that have just transpired, but my immediate future is, is quite certain. I am to stand trial alongside my brother and Elrath. I have not seen either of them yet, but heard the guards speak of our upcoming trial as they were dumping me into my cell. I'm unsure as to Elazar's condition, but he seemed to stir a bit shortly before I was dragged away from his sickbed. After all that has happened of late in Avalon, I suppose this turn of events shouldn't come as a complete surprise. Still, coming from an honorable and law-abiding family, I find that being placed on trial comes as a bit of a shock to me. I cannot imagine what charges we will face, but I know that we are not without notable allies in the court of Avalon. Surely our efforts to defend Avalon will not be forgotten by its good and true citizens. This is a most troubling situation, to be sure, but at least I will not have to face it alone. I'd like to know why the queen has any authority, really. I mean, maybe that's the structure there, to do that. What, what's the king doing? He's just sitting there on his butt. Immediately after I read the mystic words that would free Elazar from his sickness, armed knights, two of Orem's best, appeared at the doorway. They silently approached my delirious form, because remember he is the, from doing that spell, and walked me off through the depths of the keep. On the walk, my senses slowly returned to me, and I discovered I was being led to Avalon's throne room, well, which I had thought to be merely ornamental. Upon my arrival... I discovered a panel of representatives taken from the high ranking throughout the keep were assembled in front of the thrones and standards of their respective nations. King Rance was seated, but I had little time to wonder about this as Queen Nenesi's imperious voice addressed me. Her usual dulcet tones vanished as gruffly she said that Elrath, Corvus, and myself were on trial for treason. I wonder if you... Uh. <laughs> now, I, I, there's two different accounts of the events. Maybe, maybe he was taken after this to the holding cell and then after that to the trial but this seems to be more in line with what we actually experienced in the game it was with a small measure of surprise that i realized that indeed those two worthies were standing next to me as my wits returned and i was sure that this wasn't a bad dream i gave her an answer that which she correctly interpreted as a plea of not guilty and then so the tri trial quote unquote began a diatribe accounting am accounting to nothing more amounting sorry mounting to nothing more than vague suspicion and circumstantial evidence. I was allowed to ask members of the panel for their opinions on my the trial, myself, and my answers, and the possibility of treachery. As the trial continued, it was clear that no progress was being made. However, Her Highness continued bringing up events, none of them traitorous in nature, despite the spin she applied, seemed to me long past. None of these charges had any merit, and had the trial continued, the three of us would have been acquitted. As it was, however, the trial ended with the arrival of a page, panting and exhausted from running, who dragged himself into the makeshift courtroom with just enough energy to say, To arms! Southgate has fallen! Alright. Is that it? Nope. Nope. Next. I find myself being delivered from the madness of Queen Danessi's trial, only to be thrust into the absolute chaos that has erupted in the Outer Bailey. From what I could gather from Captain Calvar, our forces are now holding their ground against the Shah Aou. However, considering that our enemies have managed to secure Southgate, it seems inevitable that we shall face a long and costly struggle to successfully expel them from Avalon. Our troops look to be in good spirits, given the grim nature of our situation. Many seem possessed of an excitement that can be can only be the ex result of finally being able to take action against our foes. I fear this frenzy cannot last much longer, though. Unless we can see some considerable advantage, our chances of survival may become as rare as those of finding an honest man in Southgate. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, traitor upon traitor upon traitor. I wonder who the traitors were this time. Alrighty. Patrol Kerman, Captain Kalvarik, and Patrol Turner. Man, I guess we need to go. We cannot go out there. Alright. So, if you recall... Oh, jeez, look at this. Those lousy, stinking shot. Oh, won't get past me, sir. I'll gnaw their legs off. Let me at him. 
Hold fast, Elaine. We shall yet prevail. Farewell. Let's see. Oh wow, yeah, they're setting up barricades everywhere with the tables. Hello. Oh, sir. If you're tired, you should chew on some tea leaves. Soldier, it will keep you awake. Anything good day, sir? No. It's not a good day. Good day, sir. Is it true? Is Mythos dead yet? Not yet, soldier. Not yet. Where did you hear this? Must have been a dream. Sorry. Alright, let's just make sure that... Okay, yeah, they blocked this all off. Wow. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, we could go out that way, but I don't know if there's any point. So let us... Can we not go in here? No, we cannot. How do we get up? Huh. Oh, right here, maybe. Here we are. Alrighty, let's go. Hmm. Oh, crap. I just remembered. Didn't they say Bonnie was going out to Southgate to deliver some crap? Well, dang nation. I bet you she's... I wonder if she... Oh, what if she's the traitor? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> I doubt she's the traitor, pal. <laughs> Alrighty, let's go over here. And up to the third floor. I've tried to go here a couple times and never been able to. So now we are here in the third floor. Okay, there might be bad guys up here. Who knows? There might not be, but I have no idea what's up here. Anything? Anything? Probably not. It's, this last part of this the game seems a little bit rushed to me, doesn't it to you? I mean, it didn't seem like it was being rushed at all, and then that was like rushed and confusing. And there's nothing. Oh, well, whatever. Huh. Well, a whole lot of nothing. Which is, you know, to be expected, I suppose. Let's go. I wonder if... What's her face, though? Bonnie has been killed? Has she been captured? Or is she fine? Who knows? Maybe she, maybe the game doesn't even care about her anymore. <laughs> well, I might, though. It made a specific point of pointing out... Oh, my goodness. Okay. Oh, it's Captain Navaris. Oh, he was the training officer at the very beginning. Hold, Kellen. I have orders to secure this area now. I'm in need of all the able-bodied men I can find. Uh, I have other duties now, Captain, but perhaps I can assist you somehow. It's nigh impossible for me to find any extra men. <laughs> Nearly everyone is caught up at East Gate or on the Outer Bailey. I've been so desperate that I've tried to recruit some cooks, but they've already been pressed... They had already been pressed in attending the wounded in the inner bailey. Hmm, a warrior of your caliber will certainly be a fine addition to our defense. As I said, sir, I must complete my mission for Captain Kalvarik. Otherwise, I would be glad to stand with you. Well, I shan't steal Kalvarik's man, but I expect to see you passing this way again soon. If it were anyone but yourself, I suspect you would simply you were simply fleeing combat. Your exploits have become quite well known, though, and I only wish I could have grabbed you before the captain did. Well, good luck with your defenses, Captain Navaris. I must go now, for Captain Kalvarik urgently requires, awaits my report. I suppose I'll just make do with a few stragglers that have passed this way. May the good spirits defend you, Kellen. May they defend us all, Captain. Farewell. Alrighty. I thought that was a traitor at first. Okay, Captain Navaris is commandeering most men that pass through the third floor of the outer keep. All party members are taken. Oh, so if you had party members, you lose them right here. Oh, jeez. So you have to face... Which is to come by yourself. Well, you know, we're probably okay. We, being a scout, we're, we're not that bad off. Let us go through this portal. Oh, this, uh oh, look at that. That looks terrible. Let's stealth ourselves up. There's the peasant's bailey. Sounds like a lot of fighting is going on. 
All right. What's this? This might be the Bailey, actually. Lissa? What the heck? Who is this? I'm sorry, sir, but we've been ordered to keep these doors sealed, lest the shot will gain access to the keep, should our sister's position be overrun. Are you sure your sisterhood can hold the gatehouse? It will be no easy task, that's true, but we're totally committed to protecting the peasants. Fortunately, from what little we've heard from the battle in Eastgate, the shot will attack it there is failing. With any luck, some of the regular forces engaged there can supplement our forces here soon. What's well, good to know, for this gatehouse is a key point for us. All right. A sisterhood, a battle? Huh, interesting. Are we supposed to know them? Haven't heard anything about them. <laughs> All right, well, let's um, keep going. Maybe she'll come into play later. Okay, there's some more people. Oh, you can hear the babies crying. Oh, man. Mara. Sir, please help me. Shot and traitors from the South Gate have been pressing us heavily, and all my comrades have fallen. This pass cannot fall, or the Shot will gain access to both the Peasant's Bailey and the Outer Keep. My commander should be on the first floor of the gatehouse. She can send reinforcements. She grimaces with an obvious pain. Ugh, I can't hold this area long. You must warn her. I will. I will go immediately, brave woman. She starts to collapse, but leans on her sword. Go, quickly! I cannot stand much longer. So tell my sisters I died bravely. Madam, I cannot allow someone as brave and committed as you to sacrifice yourself needlessly. Wavering and supporting herself with her sword. I must hold my position. They will not take the long to regroup. Hurry, tell them Mara will hold this point as long as she is able. I cannot leave you to pair. perish. My wounds are not so bad, and I'm no untried recruit. She stumbles, but steadies herself. I accepted this fate when I first took my vows of blood rose. Oh, that's the sisterhood, I apparently. Though I must confess I love and I know little of your order, I certainly respect your dedication. Still, perhaps it might be better if I remain here while you seek the reinforcements. I cannot ask you to do that, good soldier. This gatehouse and the poor unfortunates of the peasants' bailey are our charge. Truly you are brave, but if holding this position is your responsibility, you would best serve your duty by alerting your commander. I am well, and you are not. To deny that I have a better chance of holding off the enemy than you now is foolishness. And she gasps in agony. Very well. Your wisdom cannot be denied. I will go if you can't relieve me. Do not worry. I will allow no enemy to pass. I will be quick. May the good spirits protect you. Farewell. May they speed you on your way. Uh oh, there they are. Look at this mob. Alright, let's see if we can. This is pretty hard. I think this is a timed fight, but I don't know. It's been too long since I played this. I was looking up a little bit of it, right, briefly. Seems the main thing is to not let ourselves get stuck. I think if you defeat these guys more of them will come so in a way I don't know if it they replace for each one killed or if it's just if you replace the whole group oh wait there they are our allies Let them. <laughs> Man, they dispatched him quick. Oh, thank goodness. Dagmar. We have one of our healers treating Mara's wounds. You took her place just in time. The healers are, were amazed that she was still alive, much less walking, considering how much blood she had lost. Well, uh, if we could say, is she expected to make a full recovery, or she truly has a will of steel to have held her position as long as she did? Mara has long been a shining example to the younger initiates of our sisterhood. Her dedication and her stubbornness, one, some might say, are quite well known. She must have been seriously injured to allow you to have allowed you to take her place. 
Indeed she was. In fact, I thought for a while that her armor was the only thing keeping her from falling in pieces. Falling to pieces in front of me. That sounds like her. She can be difficult at times, but her devotion to the welfare of our sisterhood and our charges is unshakable. If all of Avalon had her spirit, this war would have been over some time ago. Aha! Alright, let's see. Sirocco. Oh, Sirocco. That's kind of like the name Sirocco, which I think means like sucker. Like, you know, aid, help. Our thanks for holding this point, brave one. I am Sirocco, and I command the Sisterhood of the Blood Roses here in Avalon. From what you've accomplished and several rumors floating around, you must either be Callan or Corvus. In either case, it is an honor to meet. Haha, we're famous! I'm Callan, and judging by the bravery of your soldiers, it is likewise an honor to, of your soldier, it is likewise to, an honor to meet the leader of such a fine group of warriors. You have our thanks for saving Mara's life and also from preventing the Sha'a Wolf from overrunning our rear. How is it that you come to be here at such a fortuitous time? All right, well, it's quite a relief to see you and your troops, Soroko. I don't know how much longer I could have hold a, could, have, could hold out against their assaults, or by order of Captain Kalvarek, I am sent to determine the situation. My goodness, okay. By order of Captain Kalvarek, I am sent to determine the current situation here, ma'am. Though the attack from the south gate catwalk caught us off guard, we have managed to prevent the enemy from breaking into the outer and peasants' bailey thus far. From this position, they have pressed us rather heavily, and we have suffered considerable casualties. We need a key from the warden of the gates, Callum, in order to seal the doors between this gatehouse and the peasants' bailey. Well, if you can seal off the peasants' bailey, what will your next plan be? Then we will be able to concentrate on the enemy attempting access across the walkway from Southgate. Also, we may be able to provide reinforcement to the main battle taking place in the Outer Bailey. Unfortunately, since Calum has not appeared to seal the gate, he has likely been caught up in the assault. Still, we must have the keys to those doors. Well, do you have any idea where he might have been when the battle began? Though it drains my hope to admit it, he usually spends most of his time in Southgate. I thought if I thought we had any hope of success, I would personally lead an assault against Southgate in hopes of recovering Caleb and his keys. I hate to spare even one of my girls now, though, especially in such a hopeless mission. Well, I can relay your need to Captain Calvar, who can perhaps find some way to aid you. We would be very grateful for this, otherwise we will still we will slowly be ground to pieces. My sisters and I will fight on with renewed hope, for now that we have regained contact with now that we've regained contact with other forces here in Avalon. I will do all I can to make sure that you get those keys, Sirocco. May the good spirits protect you and your sisterhood in this dark hour. Alrighty. Let's see, and you? Sarah. Many thanks for your assistance, sir. We have more troops coming soon to assure complete control of this position. Judging from those you've slain... I don't know that I slain anybody here, though, to be honest. I doubt we will be too hard-pressed by those who remain in Southgate. Can I help you with anything, sir? I was wondering about your order. Since nothing is going on right now, do you think you could tell me a bit about yourselves? We are an order of women of noble birth. Well, obviously, noble birth, yes. Who have long existed the champion of defenses, the defense of the defenseless. We care for the poor and the sick and take up arms in their defense when we must. You certainly keep yourselves out of notice. Have you had any trouble being accepted by regular forces here? Generally, we find our work best accomplished without drawing attention to ourselves. As women, we are difficult to accept in the front lines. we found our place, and it has proven a vital one. Well, indeed it has. Your presence here has likely prevented the shot wolf from overrunning the castle after the fall of Southgate. We are pleased that our efforts have made a difference here. We would have preferred to have avoided the bloodshed that has occurred, but we have long been prepared for it. I'm sure most would agree with your sentiments, but perhaps it will soon be over. Farewell. Alrighty. So let's look at our quests. That was cool. We need to retrieve the keys to the Peasant's Bailey Gatehouse and take them to Sirocco. Okay. Mara, the wounded Blood Roses are covering. Sirocco, the commander of the Blood Roses, assures me that our troops can hold the East Gate now. And the Warden of the Gates, Calum, has the keys to the various gatehouses. He was last seen in South Gate. Is he a traitor? Is he dead? Is he a prisoner? 
my errand for Captain Calvara has turned out to hold far more action than I anticipated. Mere moments after my arrival in the Peasant's Bailey's gatehouse, I encountered Mara of the Blood Roses. This brave warrior woman has suffered had suffered grievous wounds repelling enemy advances from the walkway leading to the south gate, wounds so serious that I was amazed she could still stand. The attack apparently caught her and her comrades by surprise, and they were quickly overwhelmed. With some reluctance on her part, I convinced Mara to seek reinforcements from her sister knights, and then I took her place upon the walkway, defending the position against the renewed assault by the Sha'ul, running around like a <laughs> fleet-footed jackass. <laughs> Thanks to the good spirits as well as to the narrow catway, walkway, I was able to hold my ground while seriously outnumbered. It was a close contention, however. Oh, it was a close contention. However, the arrival of the Blood Rose reinforcements was a very welcome sight. A group of exclusively female warriors is indeed strange to me, but they seem to be well dedicated and disciplined group. Their leader, Sirocco, strikes me as a wise and capable commander. It is most reassuring to know that these newly revealed allies will be defending this crucial point, and I am glad that I will be returning to Captain Kalvarik with some good news. Let's look at this picture. There's, I assume that's supposed to be Mara, and those are the Owl. Ooh, look at that. Is that a, is that a work one? I bet you that's a, a one of the work Owl. And there's a, the shaman, not a shaman, but one of the, the human Sha'ul. There's another, maybe he's a, a mixed, who knows? Wow. Look at that axe, that does not look friendly. What are you doing, brother? <laughs> Alrighty. Well, let's see. Can we? Shot a warrior. Okay, no. I just want to. Oh, no, we can't look at their stuff. I just want to look at their uniforms. Oh, no. We can't take anything. That's fine. It would not be a cool. <laughs> Let's save though. That was a bit odd and tricky. Oh wow. Oh look at their bodies. There's the bodies of the owl. Man, they turned this bones. That's weird. Let's go down here right quick. Right quick. And there's Shar. Do not worry, sir. The blood roses have this area under control. Thanks to your aid. We should be able to hold the enemy at bay now. Though we've suffered some casualties, our ranks are still quite solid. Well, that's good to hear. It's really quite amazing you women are such solid fighters. We are more accustomed to treating wounds than inflicting them. However, we are all well instructed, and most of us have seen battle against the Sha'ul as we search the countryside for where refugees. Oh, that's interesting. Well, how are these refugees holding up? Hunger is the greatest enemy, of course, but disease is beginning to take its toll as well. Crowding so many people into such a small space is poison for both the body and the soul. Those who have survived have strong spirits, but they are weakening fast. Well, without your aid, they likely wouldn't have lasted as long as they did. Hold the good you and your sisters have done close to your heart, and let it fuel your determination against the Sha'au. Ah, oh, well said, Callan. Let's see. Have you seen any action yourself, though? I've seen my share of combat, sir. While I will admit it was terrifying, I managed to hold my ground and make a good account of myself. No doubt you did, my good woman. May your good fortune in war continue. Excellent. Very good. Alright, well, that's kind of cool. Interesting. Yeah, that's not a nice <laughs> loading screen, right? Actually, let's save again. Right quick. Right quick. Can we go this way? Or no? Probably a stupid idea. I may be reloading real quick. Oh no, I don't think we can get in here. Nope, it's barred. All right, well, whatever. That's fine. So let's go back to Captain Calvaric. It's funny, it's very serene music for the battle that's going on down there. Oh, look at the people down there. Ah, oh, poor people all crowded in there, starving, diseased. We need to go find Captain Calvaric again and report in. Oh, jeez, wow. <laughs> I guess he got some soldiers. Oh, there's freaking Corvus. Let's talk to Captain Avaris. How fares the gatehouse, Callan? The Blood Roses are holding out well, so perhaps you can redirect the men you've gathered here. The Blood Roses? Aren't they nurses? 
Though they've been serving in that capacity for some time, they're actually quite skilled warriors. That's for sure. They they wrecked that bunch of Sha'ul warriors. Though I'd have to see it to believe it, a fresh group of warriors would be the kind of surprise we haven't had the good fortune to experience in some time. Do you truly feel they can hold the gatehouse? Well, they are well organized, skilled, and dedicated as any man in Avalon. I feel confident they can hold their position. It's still hard to believe, but your reputation is nothing but honorable among all who speak of you. Well, except for Nanessi, but she's, you know, crazy. Very well. I shall prepare to move these men to a more useful area. Tell Captain Kalvarik I may be sending a few his way soon. Stay alive, Callan. There's still so much to be done. True enough, sir. Farewell, and may the good spirits give you victory. Very good. If Captain Avaris took any of your party members, you may now get them back. We already left our party members. Brother! It's good to see you again. Corvus! How have you fared since the trial, little brother? Have you seen any action yet? <laughs> well, I just engaged, just now I engaged some of the enemy along the catwalk that connects the Peasants' Bailey Gatehouse and Southgate. Lucky dog, I was just passing through here hoping to find some shot oh, well, myself. If only I could get closer to Southgate. Unfortunately, Captain Avaris is grabbing every able-bodied man who passes through here. Apparently, if the Peasants' Bailey Gatehouse falls, this area may well become our latest front. You better watch out for him, or he'll get you too. Well, luckily, I'm under our orders from Captain Kalvarak now. Actually, I'm on my way back to deliver a report to him right now. I've had enough of this. This standing around while my little brother gets to have the fun. Blast this useless empty room. If you know where the action is, I'd gladly follow you there. Eh, I guess we could take him with us for a bit. I'd glad to be glad. Oh, let's actually, let's talk to him again. Stay here for a bit, Corvus. I, I should have, I should always attend to my duty, no matter how ridiculous it seems. Who knows? The way this war has gone, it may be the front line in no time at all. If you need me, brother, you know where to find me. I'll keep that in mind, Corvus, until we meet again. Take care of yourself. Let's talk to him again. Brother, good to see you again, Corvus. How have you been? After the trial, I followed General Roth to Eastgate. Oh, that's where he went. The attack there is being repelled with remarkable ease, though, so I decided to find more action here. It looks like I happened into guarding an empty room, though. Well, that's great news about Eastgate, brother. Too bad about your assignment, but I'll see what I can do about getting you something more appropriate. First, though, I'm to take my info to, of the, on the situation to, in the Peasants' Bailey to Captain Kalvarik. Okay, well, here, come with me for a bit. Let's get away from here. If I stay any longer, Captain Navarro may find a strate strategically valuable broom closet for me to defend. Well, come with me, brother. It's time to show just how what our family can do. We could have used him in this last little bit, I have to say. Cat Corvus will join my party now. Alrighty. Let's, let's go. And let's see. We'll just take him for a bit. I don't know that we're going to be using Corvus, unfortunately. If we were playing as a mage or as a fighter, as a knight, this would be great because then we could just like utterly just go and wreck everybody. Because Corvus is strong as all heck. Let's see. Inventory. What does he have? A lithium breastplate. Wow. Oh my gosh! Look at this. <laughs> That's amazing gear. A lithium cloak. Stealth plus ten. Look at that. Such great dealies. How about his sword? Officer's sword. Oh, he has an officer's sword, just like we do. I mean, ours is put away right now, but dark green tights. He got out of those ladies' clothes and got back into his tights. <laughs> Alright. Are we together? Okay, we are. We are. Out to the bailey. Hmm. I don't seem to be able to go. Huh. Well, we'll go back this way. Let's go. This way. Brother, the castle is greatly changed. Hey, the whispering is still going on, but there's no buddy here whispering, actually. <laughs> Let's go down this way. Alrighty. Can we go this way? Or is it blocked off? It is blocked off. Darn, darn, darn. All right, well, maybe with the way we came in through the infirmary. Is this way open? No, that's not the way in. It's over here.
Alrighty. Nope, nope, not that way. Okay, good. For a second there, I thought I was stuck. Alright. Well, it looks like they're holding up. Let's talk to Captain Kalvarik. Have you completed your assessment of the Peasants' Bailey Gatehouse, Callum? Indeed, sir. I even encountered a bit of action there before the Blood Roses completed securing the area. The woman warriors have finally taken up arms then, huh? Well, that's good to know, for I've heard they are potent and dedicated fighters once they are pressed into action. Do you believe they can maintain their position against the continued assault from the enemy forces here in the Outer Bailey? Well, the Blood Roses are holding their ground, sir, but their forces are being divided between the first level and the top of the gatehouse. No doubt the traitors knew of the catwalk access. Fortunately, such a narrow area can be defended by a small number of troops. Can't argue with you there, sir. Eh? Anyway, is there any assistance we can provide for them? We can't commit any more men there, you know, but we may be able we may at least be able to resupply them somewhat. Well Sirocco, the commander, seems certain they can maintain their defense and possibly even offer reinforcements to our forces here if she can seal the doors leading to the peasants' bailey. To do this, though, she needs the key from Kalum. Unfortunately, that I cannot provide now. I have no idea where Kalum might be. For now, they will have to do the best they can defending the entire gatehouse. Have you anything else to report on the situation, Callan? No, sir. Have you another assignment for me? Aye. Though it's one I'd always hope we never have to complete. Consider. Retreat. In the event that the enemy breaches the outer keep, Escape through the caverns may be the only means of survival for the population of Avalon. To make this distasteful matter worse, the route is currently infested by an army of skeletons. These are believed to be the handiwork of the undead henchmen of the late Phileas. Unless we can neutralize these mindless undead, we may find ourselves ground to bits between the two forces. Well, I've worked with Phileas and Bones before, sir, so perhaps I may have an advantage in dealing with this situation. My thoughts exactly that. I've heard much of your exploits in the caverns, as well as of the necromancer's demise at the hands of a lich the two of you overcame there. Given your experience, I feel you are the most suited man at my disposal to deal with this problem. Do you feel you can take care of the skeletons for us? I do not know exactly how I will manage it, but I will certainly try, sir. Too many people's lives, both soldiers and civilians, are at stake. Excellent, Callan. Even though I loathe the idea of retreating, knowing that we will even have the option takes a great deal of worry from my shoulders. Tis no small task, but you've developed something of a re reputation for overcoming the impossible. And he scribbles a note and hands it to you. Here, this will get Wast in to open the cavern doors for you. May the good spirits light your way as you venture into the darkness against the undead menace. I will not fail you, Captain Kalvarik. Once I have taken care of the problem, I will, I will, I will report back to you. Farewell. Alrighty. So, quests. After the skeletal army in the caverns is neutralized, return to Captain Kalvarik. Oh, is that all? Okay, according to Captain Kalvarik, a skeletal army holds the lower caverns against all intruders. All human intruders, anyways. Alright, I'm gonna actually, um, say, Corvus, you stay here. And he'll be a good person to have here, I think. This is a great place for him to get more action and to reinforce the people who need it. So, with that, I want to say thank you for joining me on this episode of my <laughs> Let's Play of Siege of Avalon. We're getting really close to the end of the game, although there's still a, a, a decent bit left. But we're getting close, so take care, y'all.